Greetings, travelers. Greetings, travelers. Oh, yes, we are on the road. We are heading. We're to traveling. Imagine we're travel. traveling. Yeah, agree. yeah it's, we've been traveling so much. Yes, and we're going to continue to be traveling. So please yes. check out our event page and see where we're going to be at near you. Because... More and more announcing every day. Yes. This is crazy. We just got invited to the first annual Grafton Monster, Monster Festival. Festival. Yes. 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 They, they are opening a Grafton Monster Museum, the forgotten cryptid of West Virginia, often forgotten cryptid of West Virginia. I don't know. I play Fallout 76. If you so play you know, 76, they it. brought him back into the limelight. Uh, the Headless Horror, the, the the Great White Beast, he is getting his own festival, and he's op there, and it is tying in with the opening of the Grafton Monster Museum. And so, isn't it the 60th anniversary? That is the 60th anniversary of the initial sighting. So. so this is, I'm I'm super excited for this, but travelers, Mark got to see a bunch of you at Mad Monster. I know I don't appear at all the events. I'm the secretive and you, Bo also traveling. So. You guys are elusive. Like, we are like, elusive. Yes, you are elusive cryptids in your own right. But you guys were at Megacon. We were at Megacon. We're going to be at many of the other events. Yep. It's just the beginning of the year was a little bit touch and go with other events that yep. we had in place. We're but we have other lives besides this day, I, I, so. don't, don't tell people that, oh, okay, that okay. mystery will be dissolved <laughs> <laughs> but i'm excited for this episode because this ties in with the travel and yep. there is an amphibian involved yes and we've got the event for this coming up very very soon that we're going to be asked so we figured we had to get this episode out and about now i wrote about this wonderful Cryptid in the amazing Erie Appalachia, available from fine bookstores everywhere and the History Press. And it's and on Audible. It's on Audible from Four Horsemen Publications yes. and History Press. You so. get to hear Mar Mark tell this story, yes. which is kind of amazing. But even better, guys, you get to have it, hear him tell the story today with the advent of Erica being able to figure out what he's saying. Yeah, so. and Erica chiming in and, and correcting <laughs> me and, and doing all the fun things. So. Where now, are we starting on this? We story? are going to go in the Wayback Machine. We haven't yeah. been in the Wayback Machine in some time. It feels like it, right? I yeah. still feel like it's every episode, but sometimes... Sometimes you don't mention the Wayback Machine. Yeah, sometimes machine. I forget to bring it out. It's so, dusty. You know. We'll clean it out. We'll shop back. Yeah, okay, yeah, Wayback yeah. Machine. Well, Sherman's working on it sometimes in the back room, and you know, I don't, I don't want to talk about that. But anyway, uh, so we are going back to May of 1955. So, oh, there's some cool music so, back then. Uh, you know, there's a DeLorean that travels in 1955 sometimes, I've heard. So. That's true. That's so, true. But, uh, For those but that's that may in October or may not of know 55, what a DeLorean so. is. No, it's fine. We'll do in a future episode yeah, on that. Yeah. So now imagine you're driving home. You are a, as always with some of these great stories, you're a unnamed traveling salesman. Oh. And you're driving home on the roads along the Chillicothe area that's in Ohio. Okay. And you are driving Riverside Drive along the Little Miami River. Ooh. And you're driving through this wonderful town called Loveland, Ohio. That sounds like a cool town. All right. And it's about three in the morning. I don't know why you're out driving so late, but continue the story. You're a traveling salesman in the 50s. We don't ask questions, right? That's Trying to get home to the missus who's got the meatloaf in the oven. She's Donna Reed. She's all dressed up nice. She's waiting for you. Maybe not. Or maybe not at three in the morning. I was going to say, first of all, three o'clock in the morning and not everybody was Donna Reed. But got, we're going to go on from that part of the story. She's got your after dinner cocktail ready. She's ready. Okay, you, know. you live in a weird, weird, <laughs> weird time. Like a Nick at night time, Mark. I, I, I live watching reruns of Leave it to Beaver and all that. So okay. Come on. So, all right. Moving on. Anyway, your headlights take the corner. And you see three strange figures kind of standing alongside the road. I don't like this. All right. So the unusual creatures are about three feet in height. And they have a strange kind of leathery skin. But then when you look closely, you realize they are reptilians. And they immediately go over the guardrail and out of sight. Because the light spooked them. Wow. So what is your instinct at this point? Leave. 
You know my instinct. I've already noped out of this situation. I don't care that they're half my height. Okay. They outnumber me. I firmly believe in things, and it appears in this setup that you have me in in the way back yeah. machine. I do not have a friend to outrun. So right. I am out of there. But I'm sure our lovely friend in this story is not an Erica and didn't know about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So no, this person instead decides to get out of the car, pulls over, gets out of the car, and creeps up to see if he can track them, see where they went. In the dark at night on a yeah. highway. Okay. Yeah. So he kind of gets up to the guardrail and looks down, and the three of them are just kind of standing there talking, saying something that he can't quite understand, some sort of strange conversation. And there's definitely one of them's bigger than the others and is basically the leader. Well, he assumes it's the leader. Yeah, that's what he's kind of, he's, it's an alpha of okay. some sort. So he's getting even closer to try to get a better look and try to get a better listen. And a short distance from them, he trips and makes a little too much noise. So he's the mark of this situation. He is definitely the Mark Muncy of this situation. Okay. And the other two of them run and jump off into the water. Of the Little Miami River. Now, this is where the story gets fun. Uh, what do you mean? We're talking about walking, talking frogs. Yes, these are fun. frog people. Yes, they okay. look, he realizes they look like toads, right? These reptilian creatures. But then the one pulls a device out of somewhere. Doesn't say where, but okay. it is not a device. It is a wand. He pulls a wand like from a hidden holster and raises it high above his head and aims it at him and it shoots sparks. Sparks of lightning. And that's when the salesman decides to Erica and nope out. Okay. So. Okay. I have many thoughts. Continue till I can get to the thoughts part of this process. Okay. Well, this story basically passes in the legend, right? Mm-hmm. And there Does were various. He it? Huh? Does he report it? No, there is no authentic reporting of this episode that I can find. Okay. Others have looked too. So now there are different versions of this. You know, it's always the you know the traveling salesman. Some versions they're lizard people, not frog people. There are some other versions where the man was captured by the creature, and then he fights for the wand. And it goes off and it sends the blast of lightning and that scares the frogman into the river. And then there's even another version where it ties into our good old friends from Hopkinsville, where they're the goblins. Okay. Or the, uh, or the tub men, so that they're aliens in silver suits. Wow. Uh, okay. So. They jump into the water. That doesn't make sense. But and, continue on. All right. So completely passes into urban legend, right? It's just, it's a local story. It never made the papers. It never went national. All that. Okay. So now we go a little bit further forward in our way back machine. Okay. And this we go into the 1970s. We need to put some more snacks in this way back machine. I'm just throwing that out there. It's It's a little cramped and I think we need snacks. But okay, now we're in the 70s. I got it. And we're on Riverside Drive. Oh, same place. 1 a.m. Okay. And this guy, we know his name. He is a Loveland police officer named Ray Shockey. Okay. And he had just turned past the Totes Boot Factory. And he's driving along Low Miami River. And he sees an unidentified animal in front of his car. And he swung his spotlight over to see what the animal was. And he was shocked into disbelief. It was a Furby. He describes the creature as being around four foot tall. Oh, so So, taller. So it grew up a little bit. Probably 50 to 75 pounds. So it's soaking wet, tiny, skinny thing. It had, again, leathery skin and large bulbous eyes. It looked so weird. And it was crouched like a giant frog. And then it stood erect and it stepped over the guardrail with long, thin legs. And quickly it moved down the embankment and he watched it jump into the river. 
but one. There was one. Just the one. And he thinks it was four feet tall. Four feet tall. And um, I'm just picturing Kermit the Frog, you know, <laughs> with a so, little bit more leathery skin. You know what's interesting about when people are telling us the height and stuff like that of things? I have come to realize something mm. is that I think unless you are acutely aware of the height mm -hmm. of the other objects around you and can do the math on distance, and I'm not saying a police officer couldn't, but I don't know that these things got bigger. I'm just wondering if the person who originally described them didn't have a good height ratio situation going on so that they were all that tall because i mean if you think about it i don't know about you like i i can do comparators if i have an idea of how, uh, how tall somebody is but if it's in a distance and there's a you know ramp up or anything like you go and yeah yeah it's you know and 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 that's often the case with like bigfoot sightings and ufo sightings and alien encounters and other things people have to go back later and say well i thought it was around nine foot tall and like, well how do you know that it's like well it was big and then when i went back I saw where it was standing next to this one branch on this tree and that was, you know, X feet high. And, and then this was, you know, he said it stepped over the guardrail, you know, just like stepping over it. And that guardrail is like two feet tall. So that's, you know, if they're two feet to the waist, then you had a couple more feet, you know, there you go. So I think that's where, yeah, a police officer would use that as a. That's what I'm saying. It's like, I, I just go the, I don't know that these things got bigger. No. I think they just, yeah, and I somebody think this could guy hear a very, Yeah, but for side. and the other again, these other original sightings were a, a story passed down from a so, salesman. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Traveling salesman. Yeah, you know, hey, you know, farmer's daughters type story and anything. But anyway, now Shockey did not initially report this. Well, because, I wouldn't either because people will think that you're not. You're insane. But he did talk about it with some of the other officers in the police station, and those guys said, "Hey." There's a story that I heard in this area that there's these frog people and they you know, have a wand and all this. So because of that, he decides to do what we always say, report it, write it down. So that way that old story don't sound so crazy anymore. So he did write it down. Have you seen the police report? I have seen the police report. Oh, that's got to be And cool. then guess what happens? Uh -oh. The newspaper picks it up. So now... It starts getting attention everywhere. And suddenly numerous media outlets start calling him on the, the police station and say, we want to talk to that guy who saw the frog. We want to talk to see the guy who saw the frog man. So weeks of this are happening. And a second police officer in the town, uh, a friend of Shockey's, Mark Matthews, you know, a partner of his basically, he saw an animal in the same area, and what does he do when he sees this reptilian beast? Um, not report it, run. He shoots it. No! And put it in the trunk of his car to show Shockey, and he says, look, it's just an iguana with no tail. It's a big iguana, no tail, and it's got to be an escape pet up here, because this is Ohio, you know, and he says, yep, that's exactly what I saw. Shockey says, that's it, 100%. I just, I guess I didn't, couldn't identify it as an iguana because uh, it didn't have the tail. And because it stepped over so, a rail? What? Yeah. And Wait, what? What? Ha! Stop. Iguana on two legs. First of all, now, iguanas, there are many things iguanas can do, including get frozen and fall dead from trees in Florida. Yeah, yeah. Well, they don't but die. They just, they go into shock. They go into shock. But what they're describing is not what an iguana looks like, tail or no tail. Exactly. Bulbous eyes. Eh, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, all this. And so now debunkers and, you know, many researchers say, okay, that's it. Love and Frogman was an iguana and just a misidentified large pet reptile. Wow. Night. Now, researchers like me note that the story didn't change until the government came to investigate this. So not Project Blue Book, but some other government men came to investigate this and theorized that he was told to change his story, that it stepped over the guardrail and all this, let's debunk this. 
so wait a minute. So he puts it in the police report just to document it. Right. Somebody gets a hold of this and goes to the news. And I know that back then there were some people who would just go through police reports to find news stories. Yeah. So somebody did this, probably did a local article about it. Right. Then it and got, it got, press, national, it got and national. And then the government went, wait a minute. Yeah. And even when he came out and said, oh, it's an iguana. Yeah. Did that happen before or after the government showed after up? After the government showed up. Okay, so, so the government shows up and is like, hey, we want to investigate this. And he was like, yeah, uh, my buddy Bert yeah, shot yeah, an iguana. Yeah, and that is <laughs> obviously what I saw. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, no need to be investigating it, here. Right, exactly. And then, and then Matthews, you know, everybody's like, well, then let's see the body. Where's the body? And he's like, oh, I threw it away. I had shot it up pretty bad and uh, just need to get rid of it. It was sticking up my car. And. Oh. Oh, mm -hmm. so so Matthews brought over a dead iguana, and I realized it was a dead iguana. Amending the report, little pen. <laughs> Going to amend this report. Little white out. And oh um, yeah, 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 I told him. Oh, it stinks. So I told him to throw it away. Yeah, yeah. So no iguana body ever reported at the station. Everything was just blown out of proportion. That's all. This. That's all they're saying. There's no. You you just you just blew it all out of proportion. I feel so, like there's a but. There's more coming. Uh, so I guess we'll I guess we'll have to hear from our sponsors so, and yes, then hear what more is coming. Let's take a quick break and we'll be right back. Destiny Beard, the lyrical soprano who will haunt your dreams. With her alluring melodies and intricate harmonies, this dark siren of wistful song shall capture your soul and lead you into the night. Check out Destiny's new single, The Haunting Is Over, with international musicians Sam Haynes and Gary Bennett, as well as her other musical works at destinybeard.com. Greetings, travelers. Now available on Audible and other audiobook platforms, Eerie Appalachia. Join us, won't you, as we discuss creatures like the Popelik Monster, the White Fangs, the Snallygaster, the Wampus Cat, the Lizard Man of Skateboard Swamp, Bunny Man Bridge, and the Ohio Grassman. All these creatures and more await you if you dare listen to Eerie Appalachia. Presented by Mark Muncy, History Press, and Four Horsemen Publishing. We're well, back. We're back. So we did what Erica likes to refer to as a takey backsee. Yes. And we were like, <laughs> just kidding. Big iguana in Ohio. There's yep. so many things wrong with this. I know zoologists are like, oh, uh, that's not a thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it was a pet. It was a pet. Oh, okay. But no, huh? What? Yeah. No, no. So these guys recant, basically, uh, you know, and then we'll get back to them. Okay. We're going we're gonna to leave those the, the cops alone for a little bit. All okay. Right? Just a big hoax. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> so, all right. So now, speaking of hoaxes, we have an incident in 2016. Wow. So right. We are, we jumped heavily forward okay now near near loveland is cincinnati right okay. that's I, this is basically an outskirts town of cincinnati and now this one turned out to be a hoax okay these kids were playing what was the big game in 2016 everybody was playing it on their phones pokemon go pokemon go and they went to a hot spot one of those pokey stops in pokemon go there is one in the town of loveland and it is at an iconic location. And this is going to be our travel for this episode. And we're going to talk about that for a little bit because it's got its own history. Okay. And I promise you we'll get back to Frogman because of this. Well, right now we're in Iguana Man. So hopefully yeah, Iguana Man, Frogman, Frog Man, we whatever. get back to. But anyway, so in 2016, these kids are out playing Pokemon Go at a place called Loveland Castle. Ooh, there's a castle in there? And now there's a castle involved. And you're going to love this i can't wait to take you there this part of 
going to the Frogman Festival is at some point we're going to do some video there. So, uh, but uh, anyway, a man jumped out in a frog costume and scared some kids at Loveland Castle uh, playing Pokemon Go. And, that man is my new hero. And the Loveland Frogman comes back into prominence, and they, they took pictures of him. Oh, so suddenly it was oh, Loveland Frogman spotted again that first time in decades. But it was a it was a total hoax. Um, so anyway, let's talk about Loveland Castle. Okay, but I have to just I want to touch on the Loveland Frogman yeah. that jumped out. Yeah, this probably was not the first time he did this. No, probably not. No, so I just mad props to somebody who puts that kind of dedication into, into keeping into bringing a, legend alive. a legend alive. Yeah. So whoever you are out there. From the team of Erie Travels, high five. Yeah. Okay. Right. So, Loveland Castle. So we're going to go on a little side journey here because I've got to talk about Loveland Castle. we got to do a little deep dive into this. This is another one of those places like Coral Castle, like Solomon's Castle down in Florida, where a mad genius decides to build a like the Wonder House. This oh, guy, wow. He started construction in the mid-1920s. He was a World War I veteran. Okay. He was also a Boy Scout troop leader. His name was Harry D. Andrews. And Andrews was a man who grew up inspired by the chivalric code. What is a chival like chivalry? Like chivalry. Oh, okay. he was he was loved the knights of old and Arthur and King Arthur and then the round table and all this. So he decided he was going to focus his Boy Scout troop on chivalry. And so he termed his Boy Scout troop the Knights of the Golden Trail. Oh. And so he bought some land. And he got the money to do that by selling one-year subscriptions to the Cincinnati Inquirer. I love this. And so he goes down to the Little Miami River and starts grabbing rocks. Okay. 50 years of building his own castle. Wow. Rock at a time. And when the rock Supply ran out. He made his own bricks with cement and he used the bricks to make the bricks. He used milk crates. Wow. To make the bricks. Now, you want to talk about somebody with some time on his hands. Come this on. is some time and some dedication. So, now, the reason he, he calls the castle, it's not Loveland Castle. He calls it Chateau La Roche, which was a place he was stationed at in World War I. And it's located in the south of France. It was, you know, Chateau La Roche means rock castle. Oh, so um, how and very was, French. And so he was building this here, and he died in 1981. Okay, it wasn't quite done yet, but he willed the land and the castle to his Boy Scout troop. Oh, and they actually all pitched in and finished it shortly after his death, and now they've renovated it numerous times. And uh, when we were up there, they had just added a greenhouse and a garden to it. And it is beautiful. And there are many volunteers there, the knights of the castle. Ooh. And uh, they say there's some odd things going on in this castle. Oh, I'm sure he's still there. I have uh, no doubts and I now, just got goosebumps and I'm 100% sure he's there. So one of the things was he pulled, like our wonderful Krizlin at the Wonder House, he started collecting artifacts from all over the world, mostly medieval stuff. Imagine that, suits of armor, weapons. And he also did the thing that was pretty popular, 1920s, 1930s, was, was asking for stones from historical locations. Now, amateur archaeology, basically. And so some of that is worked into the foundations and all that. So got stones from various castles all around Europe and various things like that. So some of the things that have been seen may be tied to these artifacts. There's a ghostly figure in chainmail that's seen walking up the stairs in one area just over and over. Oh, a repeat a, ghost. A, a stone tape, yep. Uh, and then some people were staying nearby the castle and were going to visit it. And they drove past after hours because they just kind of wanted to look at the castle. And they were, you know, planning on joining the ghost tour. And while they were there, they saw strange lights over the castle. 
like uh, doing some ghostly dancing, like uh, Will O' Wisps and stuff like that. Now, Cincinnati Airport's not too far from here, so they thought nothing really unusual, except that these are doing some weird flying patterns, right? And they thought it, Miles, it might even have been drones, because this is a recent sighting. Well, this event, sense. so, but then they just shoot off into the sky at incredible speed. Well, so, could they be tiny frog-sized spaceships? That's you know the theory, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now this this group, they are a local paranormal team. They were excited to be coming to this house, uh, you know, to to the castle, and they were all this. And uh, when they were panning their light around, they noticed some eyes watching them from the woods. Some big, bulbous eyes. So guess who was visiting? It was oh. our wonderful friends. The lovely so frogman. Now, the team wants to remain anonymous because they came looking for ghosts, but instead found the frogman. And strange UFO lights. Now, remember how we always talk like the UFO hunters don't like talking about you know, the, the, don't like talking about Bigfoot or ghosts. The ghost hunters don't like talking about Bigfoot or UFOs. So this was exactly one of those situations. I would so, like to get some preternatural teams that are just willing to whatever, experience right, whatever exactly. and document what they see, whether they can explain it or not. Anyway, yeah. so they okay. scramble for their phones to take pictures. And it, it jumped into the water. Classic story. Okay, so, so new new rule, preternatural or paranormal teams that are out there. This is yeah. advice from Erie Travels. Please just put a GoPro on, get out of the car, and turn it the fuck on. The minute you see something unusual. No, just turn, turn it, it on. on. Have yeah. many hours of unusable footage, <laughs> but you'll actually catch this stuff if you're not waiting for it to happen yeah. and then turning on the thing. That's the whole point Ancient. of a dash cam. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. As so. our our supernatural friend would say, idiots. Yeah. yeah. So uh, one of our other friends, a guy named uh, Tim McComber, he's up in that area. He's an Ohio investigator, and his team thought that, you know they they were one of the ones that came looking for ghosts, and they do investigate for ghosts there at the castle, and uh, they described seeing Andrews. There, oh, uh, I could. He was. I could see that he would be there, putting that much love and dedication into something like that. I think he would, uh, if he's not sucked off, as they say in the ghost <laughs> stories. Um, I I could see him being there, watching over his grounds. I mean, yeah. he spent I mean, he's fifty spent years creating on it. it, and you know, you'd want to show it off. I mean, that's yeah. you know, you, you, that's that's a big deal, and. um you know, so the knights there and the tour guides and all that, they are ones, it, it, the place is available for weddings. It is oh. available for uh, all kinds of photo shoots. Um, so it's a beautiful place. And uh, I'm so excited to be back up there. And uh, I do love uh, Tim's comment to me was, you know, I, I was a ghost. I'm a ghost hunter. I scoff at UFOs. I scoffed at Bigfoot and especially Frogman. But now I looked at every avenue and realized there might be more to all of these things. And I never take anything for granted. So, yes, he's following your advice. Yay, Tim so. and the preternatural. Yeah, I love yeah. it. Yep. And uh, he's eager now to find other things. So, so Loveland itself, literally a short drive from Cincinnati. It's You're right there. Uh, so you can have yourself some Skyline Chili, uh, which is my favorite chili. I know. Um, it is. Yeah. Oh my Even gosh. If there's local chili. Mark's gonna get Skyline. I'm gonna no get Skyline. What. I'm gonna. Yeah. Where else can you go in and order a three way and not have people laugh at you? Uh, so uh, that's not but, what every place would do. But <laughs> moving on. And and then you know and then when you look at the castle, it's just like when you go to the Coral Castle, when you go to Solomon's Castle, when you go to any of those wonderful places, the Wonder House. It is amazing what one person can do. If they put their mind to it, some people say, "Oh, you know, the Coral Castle was built." Edward Leedskin, who built it, oh, he built it using the powers of his mind. Well, technically, he was a very smart man, and he, you know, surprisingly smart for his education, and was able to build this castle. And that's the same thing with this. I think this guy, he knew what castles looked like. He'd been in some in World War One, and he was fascinated by the knights of old. 
let's oh, build a castle. That and um, libraries exist, friends, that actually have yep. books that, oh, wait, explain engineering hypothetically. So I think yep. the lesson that you can definitely take from this is if you put your mind to something and hopefully something that has amazingly good intentions, yes. you can accomplish anything you want to. I am not going to this castle. You thank you very much for the ghosts. <laughs> that are, actually, I take that back. Here's the thing. It doesn't sound like any of these ghosts are harmful or dangerous. No. But I'm going to trust our faithful caretaker here is going to keep his castle safe. So, oh, yes, yeah. let's go visit that. But I need to comment on the frogman. Okay. Because, you know, we constantly are shown that we don't know every kind of creature or something that lives. And the fact of the matter is, if you take back to some of the prehistoric times, mm. there are very large amphibian type creatures. Like people don't realize like alligators and stuff like that have been around for oh, yeah. ever, right? Yeah. They're dinosaurs. They are literally dinosaurs. Yeah. There could be another kind of dinosauric, that's a word I just made up, um frog that could it, a dinosaur frog i hope i get quoted on that uh, that will be the only quote anybody ever that is the only quote that's, gonna, that's gonna be our, our hashtag hashtag dinosaur frog but there could be something that's like that they would probably have their own way of communicating and as far as the magic wand with the zappy yeah. like no offense but there are divining rods and stuff like that that people make that create different things it's not yep. unheard of to think that you could create something that would cause a static charge yeah I'm, I'm going with i could see this being a real thing yeah the fact that it, it reminds me of the pentagorda turtle that we talked about where there was a sighting in the 30s and it was a folk tale and everybody just said oh you know crazy and then in the 60s the navy goes on a scramble because some strange large creature is you know a strange large thing they think it's a sub is coming into the same area and I think that's exactly what this is. This is 30 you know, years past. Somebody sees something very similar, this time a credible witness. And then, oh, we have to debunk this because we can't have monster hunters out here every weekend trying to you know, destroy the area. Now, the Little Miami River it goes right into the Ohio, which is into all the big rivers. You know, this is one of the biggest rivers in the world. So um, you, know, you go to Cincinnati, which is a town of three rivers. Uh, well, Miami's one of them. The Ohio's one of them. That whole area is known for unusual stuff. There's there have been a lot of UFO sightings. Wright Patterson Air Force Base is just a little north of there, and this is Project Blue Book territory. This is uh, this area is Walter. There's a lot of ghostly bridges over the Little Miami. I mean, there's so many ghost stories along this river, and lots of strange things have been reported in this river there is a river monster that is seen in this creek you know, in this so this area is right at the edge of the appalachians uh this is the foothills you know it's miami valley they call it so it's got all those classic monster tales right this is this is the perfect breeding ground for these things and i love that these guys have a wand i i think it's i think it's <laughs> Yes, I'm I'm very proud of them and I am excited. I know you get to go to Loveland this year. I'm I get to go to Festival this the, year. The when second we second annual. So. Yeah, when we journey, I'm sure we'll be back for the third annual because yep, we'll be back many times. I'm, yes, I'm and, convinced. So. And, so our our friends who do uh Map in Black, which is those cryptid maps that we yeah. love, they're hosting this event. And, oh, uh, definitely check them out. Yeah. So. And when uh, you're up there, go visit Loveland. Go to the Loveland Frogman Festival, Festival and go to the Loveland Castle. Castle. And I, I just want to know if anybody's going to be serving frog legs. Okay, that that's, was inappropriate. And if they do, I hope a frogman comes out and zappies with your wand. <laughs> so, Mark, I think before you say something else to offend the frog people, oh, since come on. they're just... a dinosaur assessness frog, <laughs> take us away. All right. Well, with that, travelers. I want to say thank you so much for joining us. As always, please visit paranormalitymagazine.com and vote for us at uh, for the top ten podcasts. Yes, Help, yes, helps the show. And you know, and while you're there, 
Use the code TRAVELS, get 10% off if you decide to pick up an issue. And somebody hypothetically from the Erie Travels crew may be in an episode in Florida coming to you. Yes, too. yes. Uh, we, have, we have heard rumors. Rumors, so, whispers amongst the friends. Whispers on the wind uh, for their upcoming Florida issue. But uh, also, uh, while you're there, you, one of the other people that are going to be at the Frogman Festival is our friends at Wild and Weird Radio. So please give them a listen on uh, your favorite podcast of choice. Log out of here, and when you're done with us, leave us a rating, and then go over and listen to them. And they've got their takes on the Loveland Frogman they've done in the past, and definitely worthwhile. I, we love those guys. They're Absolutely. Just, friends of the uh, podcast. Friends of the family. And uh, also, go to eerietravels.com. You can sign up for our Patreon, where we have fun live events and we've also got our book clubs going and uh we uh, are doing other fun things some extra content that you're not getting here on your podcast platform of choice don't miss out yes. don't, don't let fomo get you and you can do that for a dollar a month or more so just uh you know join us whatever is comfortable for you and we appreciate all the support it helps us do more travels and go more places and go to more events and we if you have an event a monster event or a Bigfoot event or something or a UFO event or a ghost event, you want us to come out there, reach out to them and have them reach out to us. And uh, we appreciate it. And uh, that's how we've gotten to a couple of these. We've been invited. So. Absolutely. And if you have a place you think we need to check out, we are Erie Travels. We want to give you travel recommendations. So let us know because we will pop in and give it a visit. And by we, I mainly mean Mark because I'll shove him through the door. And maybe I'll go in because I can outrun him. Yes, yes. She doesn't have to outrun the zombies. But if she does have to run out to run the zombies, she's tripping me. With all that said, thank you all that. Oh, you know, we, we have to go through that every time just because sometimes it's everybody's first time. So uh, thank you again for putting up with us. And while you're out on those roads, driving along the Little Miami River, especially when you make that one turn and you're watching those guardrails, keep your eyes out for some bulbous eyes and maybe a wand that might come out with some sparks of lightning. And we will see you on the other side.